ഓമ ജ്ഞാന ചിരിടന്ധസ്യാഖ്യാനഞ്ജനശലാഖായ ൃഷ്ണപൂർവജ so many names of balarama given in these two mantras namaste hala grama we often hear of balarama's hala dha hala dha means what holding a plow and hala yudha means not just holding it but what's he doing with it hitting the demons on the head with it and hala grama i don't know it's what's written here anyway something to do with the plow village of plows seems unlikely mushala yudha what else does he fight with club mushala also means something else torch is not and he fights with a burning club sometimes namaste revati kanta who is the kanta husband of revati namaste bhakta vatsala he is very kind to his devotee even to duryodhana another name balaram is duryodhana guru is the guru of duryodhana taught him how to fight and he fought against he especially was going to use that fighting against bhim so that's an unusual leela namaste balinam shreshtha the best of the strong namaste dharani dhara who is not just holding a plow and a club but It's holding up the whole world palambare the enemy of palambasura the palambare namaste he's palambari trahima deliver me krishna purvaja who is born before krishna who is the elder brother of krishna so let's speak about balaram how can we speak about balaram who is qualified to speak about balaram <coughs> murka nicha kudri kudra muhi bishoy lalash vaishna kripa bale kare eto hashahosh krishidas kaviraj goshami in preparing shri chaitanya charitamrita said about himself that i am low born foolish nicha murka kutra insignificant and attached to sense gratification but still i have the brashness to compile compile this or still i have the courage and still i have the confidence or determination to compile this chaitanya charitamrita on what strength on the strength of the vaishnavas kripa so we need strength to do everything to speak about lord balaram requires the strength of lord balaram all strength is coming from him so we pray for his blessings to speak to the vaishnavas in his temple krishna balaram mandir on his appearance day balaram purnima this morning i was chanting on the roof before mangalarti the beautiful moon of reminding us of lord balaram full moon was shining there when we see the moon especially the full moon we can think of 
especially on this day, Balarama Chandra, beautiful moon of Lord Balaram, on Balaram Purnima appeared on this full moon day. Often we hear Jayanti, Balaram Jayanti, Nrsimha Jayanti, Hanuman Jayanti, Buddha Jayanti, Ambedkar Jayanti, Gandhi Jayanti. But actually this term Jayanti refers to a particular constellation and a particular uh, way the stars form themselves when Krishna appeared in this world approximately 5,000 years ago. So it's accurate to say Krishna Jayanti, but not Balaram Jayanti, or definitely not Ambedkar Jayanti. All, no disrespect to the Dalits, but Ambedkar is not Krishna, and nor is Mahatma Gandhi even. So, nor is Balaram. He's born on a different day with a different constellation. He is Krishna. The only difference between Balaram and Krishna is that Krishna is Krishna, blackish, and Balaram is white. So we learn from Chaitanya Charitamrita. There seems to be a lot of difference also. So all glories to the difference. That is our Sampradaya. Vaishnava Sampradaya. That Although in one sense we are one with God, but the difference is more to be appreciated. He's the boss and we are the servants. So to speak about Balaram requires his strength. He's so strong, he's known for being very strong. Of course that well-known incident is there where Srila Prabhupada is asked, who is stronger, Krishna or Balaram? Because Krishna is Sarava Karana Karana, he's the source of everything. He's the cause of all causes. And Balaram is also an expansion of Krishna. Not round the other way, even though Balaram comes before Krishna. So Balaram is known as being very strong. Actually in one place, Srila Prabhupada writes that among the different avatars of Krishna, they all represent different qualities of Krishna. And he writes that Balaram represents what of Krishna? The strength, no, he wrote the beauty. That's in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Balaram, rep, not exactly represents, but manifests or is the that one quality is very prominent in Balaram and strength he's known for strength he's called Balaram Baladev Balabhadra or something just Bala Nayam Atma Balahinena Labhya one cannot understand the truth of the soul without strength so there's one idiot Swami who was totally lacking in vivek or proper discrimination, who interpreted this to mean that one needs physical strength. So he recommended better to play football than read Bhagavad Gita, because then you'll get some physical strength. So he's an idiot. Most of the people in the world, especially in Kali Yoga, are also idiots, so he is widely lauded for his vivek. But this kind of vivek is the kind of vivek that discrimination that gets a smashing on the club from Balaram, which is delivered in disciplic succession by the gurus. Guru is known to be, where does he get the strength? How did Prabhupada get the strength to go all over the world and preach about Krishna 
that strength is in that is Nityananda Shakti. Nityananda Prabhu was told by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you go and preach. He was the first, him and Haridas, Thako, the first preachers. They got this order. So Nityananda, who is Balaram, Nitya, Rajendranandan Anjai Shachi Shuta Hailoshe. Balaram or Hailo Nitya. Balaram has come as Nityananda. And especially in our Gorya Vaishnav Sampradaya, the, those who are preachers, then they take strength from Balaram Nityananda. So in this regard, Srila Prabhupada wrote about Krishna Balaram Mandir. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally renovated Vrindavan Dham and advised his chief disciples, Rupa and Sanatan, to develop it and open it to attract the spiritual vision of the general populace. At present there are about 5,000 temples in Vrindavan and still our society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, is constructing a huge, magnificent temple for the worship of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, along with Radha Krishna and Guru Goranga. Since there is no prominent Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, we are attempting to construct one so that people will be attracted to Krishna Balaram or Nitai Gorachandra. Rajendra Nandan Jai Shachi Shuta Hoyloshe, Narotam Dash Thakur says that Balaram and the son of Maharaj Nanda have advented themselves as Gauranitai to propagate this fundamental principle. We are establishing a Krishna Balaram temple to broadcast to the world that worship of Garnetai is the same as worship of Krishna Balaram. Although it is very difficult to enter into the Radha Krishna pastimes, most of the devotees of Vrindavan are attracted to the Radha Krishna Lila. However, since Nitai Gaurachandra are direct incarnations of Balaram and Krishna. We can be directly in touch with Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. Those who are highly elevated in Krishna consciousness can enter into the pastimes of Radha Krishna through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu it is said, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Mahayana, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a combination of Radha and Krishna. This is an extract from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 16, text 282. And as with all of Srila Prabhupada's writings, it's fully infused with Balaram Shakti that although he has presented in very simple language, but the purport, the depth of what he is stating is deeper than millions of oceans. It may seem, yeah, yeah, Prabhupada opened it. We know that already. But what Srila Prabhupada is stating here is encapsulating the principles of how to attain 
the highest boon, the highest possibility of service to Radha and Krishna. He's telling the esoteric reason why he has established this temple of Krishna Balaram. This is known as Krishna Balaram Mandir, as you know. It's not known as Radha Sham Sunda Mandir or Garnitai Mandir. Srila Prabhupada specifically gave the name Krishna Balaram Mandir. He put Krishna Balaram on the central altar. Why is that? To, for the purpose of preaching. Everything Srila Prabhupada did was for the purpose of preaching. Prabhupada gave the reason here. So, so that, yeah. He first of all states, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised his chief disciples, Rupa and Sanatana, to develop Vrindavan. And of course there's no way when we say develop, what does it mean to develop Vrindavan? All these words, if we consider, there's so much depth. Develop Vrindavan means one can develop the service to Radha and Krishna. Traditionally, Vaishnavas would come to Vrindavan and they would make a little place, small, that they would live in and they, they, if they took some area, they would serve that area. They would sweep the path and make nice Bowers, Kunja, so that they all flowers and creepers and make everything very beautiful so that when Krishna and Balaram come past here, they will appreciate how beautiful this is this. Or Radha and Krishna, they may be so kind as to favor my service they may come here and enjoy their pastimes also. Srila Prabhupada built a big building and now there are so many big buildings. Again, on, from the roof of the guest house, we used to see how this Krishna Balaram temple was actually a remote spot. Yes. When Srila Prabhupada constructed this temple, Srila Prabhupada, was, he was a little afraid of expressed some fear that in this remote spot there are so many dacoits that it may become a risk because there's no populace around. To go to to Vrindavan town that means that you pass one or two ashrams and so then there will be so much open space and all around it is all open space. All greenery. Now there's so many buildings. So another way of developing Srila Prabhupada developed this temple for the same purpose that Rupa and Sanatan was sent to uh, Vrindavan by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He instructed them, look to Tirtha Udhar, find out the forgotten holy places. And not just find them out, but then little temples are there, so many places. And Bhakti Granta Prachar, preaching by making books. And to uh, revive the culture of devotional service, Bhakti Prachar. So these purposes, Rupa and Sanatan, they did this, as Prabhupada writes it, to attract the spiritual vision of the general populace. Now it used to be that the temples in Vrindavan, they were so run down. When Prabhupada, he was living at his Vangshi Gopal temple. Then he was invited to stay at Radha Dhamadatan. 
And the rooms are all broken down. Everything was all that you find all the temple all broken down. No one was coming. No interest. The misleaders of modern India, independent India, they were misleading the population that religion is the downfall of India. Because we have religion, too much religion. Therefore we are not a developed nation. So the real, the, the religion of modern India, they were promoting all these slogans, just like that same person, devoid, that Vivekin Swami. He also, he, Madhava Savar is Madhava and all these rubbish slogans. So they were, became very popular with the uh, misleaders of modern India that forget Madhav Savar and feed the poor. And to feed the poor, build a slaughterhouse. Men. Close the temples. Why so much? What is the need of all these temples? The temples of modern India will be the factories, said one certain pundit, so-called pundit, who was one of the first misleaders of India. So people were not, not interested, no interest. Who is interested? They thought this, we need economic development. So it's all run down. Now we find that religion is booming. It's a good business. There's, if you look from the roof of the guest house now, we'll see so many build, buildings everywhere, temples everywhere. No one was building temples in those days, except the Beelers and Papa. And the Beelers were building and anyway, getting some tax rebate and it was also some kind of economic consideration was there. So Prabhupada, by building this temple and showing a beautiful standard of deity worship and having his white elephants performing kirtan, 24-hour kirtan, this, all this, is one of the major factors that so many people there, the, the general population, their spiritual vision has been attracted. Now, Srila Prabhupada, yes, he built this big temple for preaching, <coughs> preaching Krishna consciousness. Here we we're worshipping the deities, but this is, Prabhupada writes, there are 5,000 temples, and most of those temples are, temples come, temple means, uh, naturally the pujaris, they need some place to live, but in many places the, the temple and the home are indistinguishable, and at some point the, the temple which was established as a temple, it becomes more of a home for the people living there, and the temple part becomes less emphasized. So Srila Prabhupada developed this temple to show, putting Krishna in the center. He's not someone on the side. Balaram is there to serve, to establish the principle of service. Balaram, he's the elder brother of Krishna. He specifically took this form as the he, he came as the elder, of course, he's eternal, the elder brother of Krishna, Krishna Purvaja, Krishna Braja. But in his when he came previously with Lord Ram as with Lakshman. So a younger brother has a very good opportunity to serve. The younger brother has to serve the elder brother. So he was serving as Lakshman in so many ways. Everything he was doing for this. But he felt very unhappy that 
Lord Ram never listens to me. I want to, I, I want to kill Kai Kai, kill Dasharath. He was ready even. But if Dasharath is insisting that you go to the forest, then no need for him. His intense devotion to Lord Ram was such. He, he had such an idea. But Ram always restrained him. So he wasn't very happy that I have to serve. I'm serving him, but if I'd have been the elder brother, I wouldn't have let all this happen. All this, all this misery and humiliation. And next time I'm going to be the elder brother, so that Krishna, so or Rah, when I come, then I'll make sure he doesn't get himself into trouble by being too righteous. Of course, Balaram with Krishna, he keeps Krishna, tries to keep Krishna out of trouble by not being too unrighteous, because Krishna is in a different mood to Ramachandra. Sometimes he, Balaram is chastising, is the elder brother, chastising Krishna. That you see, now you married, or you took Rukmini, and her elder brother, it's only to be expected, he opposed that, and now you humiliated him by giving him a punk hairstyle. So that's not very good. He's a relative, after all. So Balaram is famous as a mediator. He would always try to, to be, especially between the Pandavas and the Kauravas, he was Madhyastha. He was neither, not favoring either side, but somewhere in between, mediator. So Balaram, he's the elder brother of Krishna, and he is Adi Guru. He's the first Guru because he's the first expansion of Krishna and he points out that he's the one, the first one. To put See, he's the one. He's the one to be served. He's pointing everyone toward Krishna. And as Guru, he's not only saying, but he's the best servant. He shows by practice, not just precept. He serves Lord Krishna in all ways. In Shantarasi, he serves specifically as the shoes of Lord Krishna, as his bed. He becomes a very big bed also for a very big Vishnu, Mahavishnu, and he becomes, not becomes, he is eternal, but we say like that, he becomes Anantadev, and as Anantadev he expands us to shoes, the umbrella, the Brahmin thread, all the paraphernalia for the service of the Lord, all the temples, they are considered expansions of Anantade, Balaram, the Arati paraphernalia, as an expansion of Balaram, all, everything for the service of Krishna. So he expands himself also, or he, he manifests the whole of Vrindavan Dham. It's all maintained by Balaram Shakti. So in, like this, in Shantaras, Shantarata. He's serving everything Krishna needs. Balaram is there. Let me serve him like this. Then in Dasyara, of course, Balaram, he's the elder brother of Krishna. And Krishna, as the younger brother, takes the junior position, or subordinate position. But Balaram also sees 
Krishna as my master, my Prabhu. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami in explaining the position of Advaita Acharya as an superficially an elder of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he considers himself the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in explaining this phenomenon. Phenomenon. He elaborately describes how except Krishna, everyone considers themselves a servant of Krishna. Everyone, including his own expansions, including Balaram. And he gives the evidence from Srimad Bhagavatam that when the when Balaram saw the cowherd men on Govardhan, when they were with their with these second year calves, the two year old calves, on the top of Govardhan Hill, and all of a sudden the calves who they were being herded were being hurt, all of a sudden they all ran away. They all ran down the hill. And they were frustrated that they that their expert coward men they couldn't control the little calves. They became very upset. They they just ran away. And they went they, they went to see why why is that? What's going on? Sorry, they had the cows. The cows, they couldn't control the cows. And the cows they came down, they saw the cows had come because they saw their calves. They became so affectionate that they ran away, they ran down to the calves. And the coward men are very angry that, and frustrated that we can't control these cows. But then when they saw their sons, they forgot all their anger and became full of the same affection that the cows had for their calves. And Balaram wondered, how is this? How is that possible? It's just this is this is extraordinary affection. This must be some manifestation of the potency of my Lord Krishna. Of course, Krishna had taken the form of the cows and the calves. That's why there is so much attraction because Krishna is more attractive <coughs> even than one's own relatives even in the spiritual world. So Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami cites this as how Balaram, he thinks that Krishna is my Lord, I am the servant. And practically also, though they're friends, they're, they're, they're succulents, they're, they're fr brothers means the elder brother is superior, but still they're friendly also. So friendly, they'd be fighting like bulls, roaring in the pasturing grounds. They take the calves out, the young boys, and they're playing all day. That's another way that Balaram is serving Krishna. He expands all the different expansions, Maha Sankarsham, Vasudev, Sankarsha, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, all the Chatavyuhas, and from them come the Karadakshai Vishnu, the Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Shiradakshai Vishnu. These are all expansions of Balaram. He's looking out, he's manifesting the material world. Krishna, he doesn't have to worry about that. Krishna can just play. He's the supreme enjoyer. He's not worrying about how the material world is being managed. Balaram in his expansion, he's manifesting the material world. So they play, Krishna and Balaram are playing. In this way, Balaram is giving pleasure to Krishna, he's serving Krishna in Sakyaras. When the playing is over, Krishna is feeling very tired, and sometimes Balaram is massaging Krishna's feet. So he takes the position of a servant. Of course, as the elder brother, he's that's Vatsalyaras, that he takes the uh, 
looking after position of looking after Krishna as as a helpless sometimes seeing him as a he needs looking after Mother Yashoda she was unhappy that Nanda Maharaj was sending Krishna out with the calves she was unhappy because she didn't want him to go away she was also unhappy that my little boy in the forest who's going to look after him there's so many dangers so she's told Balram you go also look after him make sure he doesn't get into any trouble so Balaram is deputed by Mother Yashoda to look after Krishna and that Vatsalya writes that very formally more in Dwaraka than in Vrindavan he takes the position of elder brother because Dwaraka is more formal and of course Balaram he doesn't have entrance into Krishna's loving affairs the, the loving affairs with the gopis that is Madhurya Rati so brothers they have very close relationship but there's some limits also when the when the man is having conjugal relationships with his wife it's not a time for the brother to come it's a different mood altogether so Balaram he has his own gopis but he when Krishna is enjoying intimately with his gopis and Balaram he's he's not involved in that but he is also by another form Ananga Manjari, the younger sister of Shimati Radharani, he also is Ananga Manjari to serve Radha and Krishna in that way. So in all ways he serves Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada established this Krishna Balaram temple to awaken the general, the general populace, their spiritual vision that we have to serve Krishna. Who is the strongest, Krishna and Balaram? Yeah, that question, yeah, it's, I didn't give Prabhupada's answer. Yeah. Well, we always say that Balaram is strong and he's the elder brother. So then someone might say Krishna and someone might, because Krishna is the source of everything, including Balam Balavatam Chahaj. I am the strength of Balaram. Could be that verse could be taken that way also. I am the strength of the strong. So at the same time we see that practically Balaram seems to be strong I mean Krishna in a fight generally it's expected that Balaram is showing more strength so Prabhupada some may take the side of Balaram and some may take the side of Krishna and Prabhupada gave the simple answer and we see that Balaram wait a minute Balaram is leaning on Krishna, so that shows Krishna is the strongest, because Balaram is leaning on him. So Balaram is pointing to serve Krishna. He's the first guru. Srila Prabhupada worshipped Chaitanya Mahaprabhu principally as Gornita. He established the worship of Gornita. In this purport, that I, that from the section of the purport I was reading, Srila Prabhupada stated that most devotees in Vrindavan are interested in Radha Krishna Lila. Of course, there are many devotees who are also interested in Bal Gopal. The Balab Sampradaya is very prominent traditionally here also. And they're interested in the worship of 
baby Krishna. And Nimbaka Sampradaya is also centered here. They also worship Radha Krishna, but not the Gauriya's Radha Krishna. There's more reverences there. And Sri Sampradaya, they also recognize Mathura Vrindavan as one of the Divya Deshan. But Prabhupada writes that the devotees of Vrindavan, them, what's the exact words? Mostly in truth. Most of the devotees of Vrindavan are attracted to the Radha Krishna Lila. Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, he would establish, he established so many temples with the deities Guru, Goranga, Gandharvika, Giridhari. Guru Goranga means the picture of the Guru will be there on the altar. Goranga will be there. And Gandharvika, Srimati Radharani, she will be there with Giridhari. It means the deities will be Radha Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Or sometimes the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they establish temples in which there are no deities of Radha Krishna, but they'll establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Gadadha, Gaur Gadadha. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was worshipping Radha Madhava and Gaur Gadadha. So Gaur Gadadha, they are worshipped by devotees who they are through or by worshipping Gaur Gadadha, aiming at worship of Radha and Krishna. And those who worship Gaur Nittai, they are aiming at worship of Krishna Balaram or Sakharas. Prabhupada established temples of Gaur Nittai all over the world, or he he put Radha Krishna in a Gaur and Nittai also. He writes here that I was, we, was, we have established. the Krishna Balaram temple, just to show that Garnetai are Krishna Balaram. So what is the import of this? It's, it's a very big subject. We don't, my time is officially up. But I'll remember Krishna's rules for killing Jayadrata and take an extension. Dhruva Maharaj Prabhu, they can give the next class. He's there, all right. Well, Maharaj is also in the Balaram Sahasranama. It's one of the names of Balaram, is Maharaj. So, I'll take permission from Maharaj to extend a little bit. Actually, Balaram is Ananta, so we have to... But he comes as the deity in a, in a... He's unlimited, but he comes in a form that we can serve, manageable form, we could say. So, although we should, or should speak unlimitedly about Balaram, we'll try and squeeze it into a little time. So Prabhupada established the worship of Garnitai, that this is Garnitai, Krishna Balaram. They're non-different. So Garnitai, Krishna Balaram, and next order is Radha Shamsun. So Garnitai, they are the forms of Krishna Balaram who are very accessible in this age, not only accessible, but the, not only can we approach them, but they approach us. That is their mercy. So they are Krishna Balaram. And Balaram is Adi Guru. 
He is pointing, serve Krishna. And how to serve? You take darshan, gonitai, offer obeisances, go to Krishna Bala, then go to Radha Shamsi. That service principle. Not that I'm going to I'm going to jump up on the altar and start dancing Raslila with Radha Shamsun. With service principle. Balaram's service mood is such that he wants every jiva to serve Krishna. Therefore, he infuses those who are preachers, those who are, especially those who are engaged in the work of delivering conditioned souls, giving mantra. Guru means, Balaram is Guru Tattva, Guru means who is giving mantra. So that mantra, that should have strength. That strength comes from Balaram. Srila Prabhupada has written elsewhere that we should take the sword of knowledge from Krishna and strength from Balaram. So Krishna is giving the knowledge in Bhagavad Gita and Balaram gives the strength by which we can follow that. And Balaram gives the strength by which Krishna consciousness can be spread all over the world. So preachers, this temple is meant for preaching. Everything Srila Prabhupada did was meant for preaching Krishna consciousness. So devotees they, from all over the world can come here and pray to Gornitai and Krishna Balaram for strength to follow the principles of Krishna consciousness themselves and infuse that into others. Srila Prabhupada was filled with the, the strength of Nityananda Prabhu. He wrote that my Guru Maharaj, he is Lord Nityananda. So Srila Prabhupada is Lord Nityananda in the sense that he is fully infused with the strength of Lord Nityananda Balaram to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Srila Prabhupada established the worship of Balaram all over the world. That everyone, every day, all his disciples, they're always chanting the name of Lord Balaram, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, he told him that this Rama in Hare Rama, that, can, that means Balaram and the son of Lord of Dasharat Maharaj, Ramachandra, Raghuvamshi Rama, can also mean Parashuram and also means Radhika Ramana, Krishna. But especially today when we are chanting Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, in Krishna Balaram temple, on Balaram Purnima. Then today especially, Rama means Balaram. So Prabhupada established the, so many temples of Balaram. It's not the only temple of Balaram that he established. So many temples, along with Jagannath, he established the worship of Lord Balaram all over the world. Now Balaram is giving strength, and on this day we pray to Lord Balaram to give us strength in this very strong Kali Yuga. The influence of Kali Yuga is very strong. So we can pray to Lord Balaram to give us strength to resist the temptations of Kali Yuga. And pray to Lord Balaram that this powerful mission of Krishna consciousness that Srila Prabhupada brought that may be successful. There are so many challenges to our Krishna consciousness movement. It can only survive and flourish by spiritual strength. So we pray to Lord Balaram to especially to infuse the those who have 
taken the responsibility for uh, Guru, to take the position of Guru, to impart knowledge of Krishna and Krishna consciousness to others. Let Lord Balaram give them strength so that they may impart that strength on behalf of the Parampara Acharyas, impart that strength to others so that this movement be strong. This Krishna Balaram temple is, if this, everything is spiritually strong here in Vrindavan, Vrindavan and Mayapur, these two non-different outposts. Actually, we say outposts of the spiritual world, but the material world, it's an outpost or an outhouse. Outhouse means a toilet. So this is, this is the center of the world. When Srila Prabhupada was in Gainesville, Florida, he referred it to it as this remote place. I've come to this remote place. So people who are listening, they thought it might have been remote. It's a long way from New York. It's a remote, but then Prabhupada said remote place, so far from Vrindavan. This is the spiritual world and our temples here, if, they are, if the spiritual strength is maintained, then that spiritual strength will give strength to the whole of Srila Prabhupada's International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Conversely, if Mayabad, Sahajiabad, and weakness of any forms of deviation enter here, then it's very dangerous for the whole movement. So we pray on this appearance day of Lord Balaram that he infuse us with the strength to receive the gifts that Srila Prabhupada has given us. What Srila Prabhupada has given us is very powerful. We cannot accept that. We cannot accept the gifts unless we are also powerful. If someone, if someone gives you a big box full of gold, you have to be very strong to hold it. It's very heavy. The gift of the Guru is very heavy. It requires strength. Balaram Nityananda, through his representatives, gives strength. So we can pray to Lord Balaram for the strength to accept the gift of Krishna consciousness and distribute that to others. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Sri Gornitai ki jai, Sri Krishna Balaram ki jai.